Microsoft has released Windows 365, a cloud-based PC that can be accessed using a multitude of devices from anywhere in the world. And in this video, I'm going to do just that. Well, not the anywhere in the world part, but I'm going to take an iPad, a Raspberry Pi 400, a MacBook, and a Windows laptop, and I'm going to use them to connect up to a cloud-based PC running on Windows 365. I'm going to use the web browser for all of those devices, and for the iPad, the Mac, and the Windows machine, I'm going to go and use the remote desktop client as well. Now at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about my thoughts about Windows 365, and I'll give you a spoiler alert. I'm not as impressed with the service as I was hoping to be. I was pretty excited about the service, and I thought this was going to solve a lot of issues for me, but in reality, I don't know if it's quite there yet. So I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. And another spoiler alert, I'm not using the Android operating system for any of the demos here because I don't currently have an Android device that I can use. However, I will use an iOS device, the iPad, I will use a Mac, I'll use a Raspberry Pi, and I'll use the Windows system in order to connect up. So let's have a look at those, and I'll put chapter markers down below, so if you just want to see one or the other, you can go and check those out through the markers down below. But let's go have a look at all of the ways that I can connect into a Windows 365 environment. I'll be provisioned or I'll purchase a subscription to Windows 365 and then what I want to do is go and rename that machine that I created with something a little more friendly. I don't have a lot of machines so one machine is not going to make a difference but if I had many of them it would. I'll then open it up in the browser and underneath the browser I can now allow it to access local resources such as a printer, clipboard, file transfers in preview. I wish it said camera, it doesn't, we'll see that later on in the video. So I'll go in and it'll launch a Windows 10 machine. This is my Windows 365 machine, whatever the specs were that I have uh, for it. I'll make it full screen so I can see things a little more clearly. And I can go and see what programs I've installed. This is a bare bones machine, so I really just have all the default programs that are in there. But I could open up a browser. I can log into the browser with my credentials so it'll remember all my bookmarks and everything. It is the Edge browser there. And then I could go to Microsoft 365, log in and authenticate, and install Microsoft Office. Web browsers aside, let's have a look at some other things that I can do with this cloud PC, this Windows 365 system I have. If I go in, I can restart it. That's handy if it's frozen or something and I want to restart it. I can reset it. This actually does a complete fresh installation of Windows 10. It removes all my files, my programs, my settings. So that's that might be handy in a testing environment where I want to go in and have an absolutely clean system to test on or a school environment. I could rename it. You can see I've already renamed mine and I can troubleshoot it. So let's see if there's an issue with maybe my connection and maybe that's why my web browser experience hasn't been that great on that remote machine. But I do know that I have a very fast connection here in my home. So there's no issues detected there. So it's not indicating there's any issues there. It is interesting here that it does say I was last connected 17 hours ago. I, I was not. I was connected only a few moments ago. And it does give me a summary of the machine. Now, one of the things I can do here is go to the remote desktop. And for both Windows and Mac, you can download a remote desktop client that gives you a little bit of a better experience. You can also use a remote desktop on the iOS devices such as an iPad or an iPhone and on an Android device such as a Android tablet or a, or a Android phone. Both of those, all of these have to be downloaded because I'm currently on a Windows machine. You can see it's asking me to download the 64-bit version of remote desktop. I already have it. But each of these also has a subscription URL. And when you go to the subscription URL, this isn't specific to your machine. What this will do is it will find this location for remote desktop. It'll resolve this. And then you'll need to authenticate using the remote desktop client and then it will find your machine. I'll show you what I mean. So I'll copy this, buddy. But let's go ahead and download the 64-bit client. It downloads the remote desktop client. I'll open up that file and it'll become the remote desktop setup wizard. I'll go into next. Um, in my case, I already have it, so I'll just run a quick repair on there. Just put the latest 64-bit version on there. It's a very quick installation. You can also download a 32-bit version as well as an ARM version of it as well. So now I'll go into next here 
and it says subscribe. Now I already have that subs subscription URL there, so I'll say done to that. This will launch that remote desktop software. So I'll have the remote desktop client that I can then use and I'll subscribe to my machine. It'll say, let's get started. It's called remote desktop. This shouldn't be confused with the remote desktop connection. It's called remote desktop, not remote desktop connection. That's a little bit of a glitch there. I'll just show you what I mean. If I go in here and go into remote, you'll notice that remote desktop connections available. I actually want remote desktop. This is what I want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subscribe using a URL. That's the URL that I have. I'll paste that in. And then what it's going to do is it's going to ask me to authenticate and I'll have to do that. Once I authenticate, you'll see that my machine shows up here. Notice that it doesn't use the name that I have for that PC. Give it a double click and I'll connect into it using this remote desktop. The remote desktop experience is better than the web interface experience for a few reasons. One thing is that it will actually use the webcam connection. So if I use a, a, something like Microsoft Teams and I want to do a video conference call, it will use the webcam that's built into the system that I'm using to access the cloud PC. Now here on my Windows machine, it was a little bit slow. It wasn't very good fidelity. So that could be because I'm using a fairly low powered machine, but it wouldn't be workable if I was trying to teach using this cloud PC. The other thing that I like about it is if I open up an application, let's open up Excel, it will give me multiple screens. So for example, on the machine that I'm using to record this video, I have three monitors. And if I drag this off to the side, I'll just leave a little bit here. It actually drags that Excel spreadsheet to one of my other monitors. So I can drag it between the different monitors that I have connected to this host system. That's pretty good. However, if I go into something like a browser here, let's go into, uh, I was grabbing some data here on some, some games here. You can see, you know, I'm browsing the web and such. It's not the fastest browsing experience going. It's taking a little while for these pages to come up. If I go ahead and grab this URL here, we'll copy this URL here, go back into Excel, go into data. We'll do a get data uh, from another source from the web. We'll paste this URL in here. You see it's not really fast. It's taking a while to do some of these things. And that can be a little bit frustrating, even on a regular system. But, you know, maybe if I'm using some application that only runs on Windows, and maybe if I'm using my Mac, maybe this is acceptable. And I go in there, you can see that it's trying to go and pull that data. It's trying to establish a connection there. It, it's not as quick as if I was using my host system. Here I am on my Raspberry Pi, and I'm just going to go into the Chromium browser here. And we're going to connect up to the Windows 365. So, so we'll go ahead and we'll authenticate. I'll see my machines here, so I'm going to open up in a browser. And again, you'll notice that the camera is not available here. So I'm going to allow the access for the other devices. You can see this is where I left the system. I can even put it into full screen. So now I have a full screen here, and now I can start using Windows on my Raspberry Pi here. So I can go in, I can open up Excel, and it's pretty good. I mean, I can use it fairly effectively here. I'm using a very inexpensive Raspberry Pi 400, so I've got a very small sub $100 computer. This could, of course, just be a Raspberry Pi 4 if I already have keyboard and everything. That's a subject of another video. But you can see here, um, everything is good. I'm going around. Now, of course, the challenge without the camera is I'm not going to be able to use it for things like video calls and such. But I can still use many of the applications that I might want to use here on the Raspberry Pi. You'll notice that I've gone in and uh, installed Firefox on here as well in the Edge browser. Unfortunately, this is where things don't really work all that well. If I go into the Edge browser, and this is a bit of a showstopper as far as I'm concerned in terms of using the uh, Windows 365 as a, as a useful tool, I'm going to go into something, let's say we go into my Microsoft Office account, something very common, a lot of people would want to do this. It'll come in and welcome me, but you'll notice it was a little bit slow. I'm going to go into Outlook to try to get into my email here. And again, a little bit slow. I could live with that. But what will happen is it will actually start crashing. So if I go in and I try to do a search, I lose the connection to the remote PC. It reconnects. Um, I try to do a search. It's not responding. 
So a lot of challenges here, and I was getting this consistently. I went in and I attempted to use my uh, Firefox browser to do the same thing. Same issue, was constantly crashing, reconnection issues. So I'm not 100%, well, I'm not even 40% sold on using Windows 365 at this point in time. This is completely not uh, uh, workable as a solution. I have a crash here, so you can see. I'm having some problems using any type of browser within Windows 365. Browsers are pretty important, so again, that's a bit of an issue for me. As expected, the Mac experience is going to be very similar. We can open up in a browser, it'll connect up to the system. I'm going to be able to control it through the Safari web browser in this case here. Once again, it doesn't mention the, the camera there. I will allow it. It connects directly into the environment. You can see the spreadsheet that I was working on earlier. You can see the web browser that I had, and I have my environment within a web environment. I can also go in and make it full screen. So this here mimics the remote desktop. But if I go in and use some video things, for example, if I go into my Microsoft Teams here, let's see what a video chat looks like. I'll just initiate a video chat with Clark Kent. Notice that video is not an option for me. So let's go out of full screen and let's disconnect from this. So from the portal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the remote desktop. Now I'm going to grab the subscription URL. So let's grab that right away. And I already have the downloaded remote desktop, but to show you, I can go to the app store it's going to say, oh, you already have it. I'll open it up. Now, what I can do here is if I go into workspaces, I can add a workspace and that's where I'll put in that subscription URL. So I'll paste in that subscription URL. It's going to put that information in there. I'll add that workspace in. And then what I'm going to do is authenticate again. Once I've authenticated, it's then going to find all of my machines that I have subscriptions to. There it is right there. Double click. Now I have the workspace. You can see, again, it's left right where I left off. So I'll just minimize Teams here. So you can see it's the same machine here. I have the same Excel spreadsheet here. I can close that down if I want to. Let's go back into Teams. Now, a big difference here now is notice that when I want to speak with Clark in my Microsoft Teams, the camera does appear. So this will actually give me the camera here. Let me wave my hands around a little bit so you can see it's not great it's all fragmented and such so I don't really think that's a great experience I wouldn't want to be seeing that on the other end of a call so well it does access your camera I don't think it does it particularly well I'm here on my iPad and I'm going to take a look at Windows 365 so I'm gonna open up the edge browser and just as a quick note, I am using a Bluetooth keyboard that does have a pointing device attached. So I have a little trackpad. I need to authenticate. So let me first go into Windows 365. When you go to Windows 365, you'll be welcomed with your cloud PC screen. Once you log in, you're actually going to be in Microsoft 365. So everything will be available to you. If you have a Microsoft Office subscription, whatever you need. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to log in with the same organizational account that I have that allows me to get to my cloud PC. So if it was provisioned for me or if I purchase on my own, I just need to know which account I'm using. So let's log in. I've successfully logged in and I'm welcomed with my cloud PC portal. You can see that I got a machine here called Windows 365 Frank. It's a basic machine, one virtual CPU, two gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. I did go into the little gear icon here and I renamed it to that name so I could remember it. I could go in and get more cloud PCs. I could manage the organization. And if I hit the tiles in the top left corner here, you'll see that I'm actually in Microsoft 365. And if I go to all apps, you can see that Windows 365 is actually now added to that selection. So however I get here through Microsoft 365 or directly typing Windows 365, here I am. Now, I was really excited when I saw this. I thought, oh, this is great. I'm going to go in. I'm going to be able to use my web browser within my iPad in order to access uh, my virtual machine here. When I open in the browser, I was even more excited because it went in, found the remote desktop client, did give me a warning that this client might not be supported, but this really excited me. The idea that I could get access to local resources until I took a closer look and I saw wait a minute, my webcam's not there. 
so I can get clipboard, microphone, and printer, but my web camera's not there, so I now know that Microsoft Teams, for example, I'm not going to be able to do calls directly through that Windows 365 cloud PC. I'm going to have to do it through the Teams application on my iPad or whatever device has a camera. So I was a little disappointed, but I'll allow access to those few resources there. It's now going to launch the cloud PC. I'm going to have to re-authenticate to the Active Directory on Azure. And the PC is going to show up in my browser in the exact same state it was in when I left it. So I can move around a little bit and I can scroll up and you'll see that then I get my start menu. So let's take a look at an iPad connected up using the remote desktop. So if I go here, once again, I want to grab that subscription URL so that I have that because I'm going to set up a workspace. And then I can download the application if I don't already have it. In my case, I already have this application installed, so I'll just go ahead and open it. And underneath workspaces, I can go in and add a new workspace. And this is where I would put in that subscription URL. So I would paste in that subscription URL and I already have a subscription there, but I would just go in and add it in and then it would add in this cloud PC. It'll give me a full screen experience. Now, one of the things I do have with my iPad is a little external Bluetooth keyboard that has a pointing device on it as well. So you can see I can move my mouse around. If I want to grab that window, I can use my finger on the iPad. I find that's easier to move things around with. But again, right back to where I left off, I've got this environment here. If I go into browsing, I'm going to get the same things as I had before. It takes a little while for it to open up. And I can now work with Windows on my iPad. This is pretty handy. Again, it just wasn't as crisp as I would hope that it would be. Here I am in a Teams environment. And let's say I go into something like a chat. And let's choose someone like Clark. You'll notice that with the remote desktop client, I do have the ability to use the camera. So let's do a video call. But when I go to do a video call, you'll notice that it will call the recipient, in this case, Clark Kent. And again, I'm in the camera and it's not very smooth. So it's not a very smooth camera and you can see all my comic book stuff behind me. So it's not the smoothest experience and I would not want to use this. So that was a lot of information and if you've watched this far, thank you very much. I hope you found that very interesting. So what do I think about Windows 365? Well, as you saw with the demos, I ran into a lot of issues that I think for me are actually a bit of a showstopper in terms of using the service. If maybe I had a more powerful system that I connected to remotely, maybe that would work. But I found that the video was a real issue. I use Microsoft Teams a lot and without really high quality video, that's just not going to work for me. And then the other thing that I found is, of course, in some scenarios where things were crashing a lot, that's obviously not acceptable. Maybe if I had an application that only ran in Windows and I had a Mac computer and only needed to access that uh, environment every so often, I didn't have to do a lot with that Windows machine, then that would be a workaround that would avoid having me go out and purchase a new Windows machine. Or maybe that would be a workaround that could work with that application on an infrequent basis. But even then, paying for an entire month's worth of, of compute power and only using it occasionally, I don't think that's going to be very useful for me. Now, from an organizational standpoint, some of the management tools that you get with Windows 365, those might be interesting in terms of sending out a generic image, but I will say as an individual or even as an instructor, right now, not really sold on the service. I will be keeping an eye on it to see if things improve, but as it stands right now, I'm going to give it a bit of a non-passing grade, if you would, and I'll wait until it improves a little bit or until I identify some needs or maybe the price drops. Something's got to change for me to actually enjoy using that service and finding it useful. Thank you for watching, and here's some other videos that deal with virtualization, cloud-based systems, and of course, I have lots of videos on this channel about lots of other topics. Thank you again for watching.